When I was a freshman in college, I started studying computer science because I liked video games and I liked websites and all of the silly reasons that 18 year olds want to study computer science. And I took my first computer science class and our professors had us make games and, and little pages and very sneakily started to teach us a lot of mathematical theory. And I really started to become very interested in this. And as we went through, we sort of started with very basic things, but took them larger and took them more abstractly. And I started to see that there were some very powerful and very interesting ideas present in computer science. This all culminated when we walked through a derivation using only the tools that we had learned about in the last few weeks, only very simple, seemingly simple ideas that we had just learned. And we were able to define a way to create functions that referred to themselves, recursive functions, like the Fibonacci function or the factorial function. This process, this tool, was called the Y Combinator. And it was so eye-opening to me that I actually had to go outside and, and sit on a bench to just think about it for hours. It was the first time I had really started to realize that computer science wasn't just about making games or making websites. It was actually about explaining how we think about procedures and ideas and really the fabric of logic. As I continued to study, I started to read more and more and when I was in my senior year, I actually had an opportunity to, to work with the professor who had first taught me about the Y Combinator and, and really about programming. And we began to read a lot of papers, a lot of recent papers and very interesting ideas that were on the fringe of computer science. And in these papers, I noticed that very commonly, when someone was defining a system, defining a language to write their proof, they would include a operator called fix, which allowed you to create recursive functions. It was the Y Combinator embedded into their framework. This allowed them to simplify greatly the proofs that they were writing while maintaining the power of the language. This was such a full circle for me and such a powerful idea that I decided to finally pull the trigger on something I'd wanted to do since that freshman year lecture and go and get a tattoo of that equation. Now, I'd love to explain to you a bit about how this works, but before, we need to talk a little bit about the field that this comes from. It's called Lambda Calculus, and it's a lot like algebra in that they're both all about functions. But the difference is that algebra was all about equalities and naming functions, stating that something was equal to a value. Lambda calculus doesn't have equalities and it doesn't name functions. Everything is simply a value. Functions are just like numbers and numbers are just like functions. In fact, you don't need numbers at all. All you need are functions. The key idea is that functions can consume functions as arguments and produce other functions as results. We are not limited to simply talking about very basic data, like a single number or pairs of numbers. The idea that functions can produce functions and consume functions has very interesting ramifications. One that's very interesting is something called the omega combinator. It is a function composed only of functions, and it works basically like this. What if we had a function it took a function as an argument and passed a copy of itself right back into it, branching out into two copies. What if we took this function and we called it with the exact same function as its argument? Both of those would branch out into two new copies of themselves, but each of those branches would cause one of them to be used up. We would have two, briefly four, but back to two. And in fact, we end up with exactly what we just started with. We can keep stepping through this because we are right back to where we started. 
And in fact, we will always come right back to where we started with the Omega Combinator. It is an infinitely self-generating function. It is a wheel that spins infinitely, but never goes anywhere. This idea is very powerful and very interesting, and is at the heart of how the Y Combinator works. You see, if the Omega Combinator is a wheel, then the Y Combinator is simply taking a baseball card and sticking it into the spokes of that wheel, such that every time the wheel goes around, the baseball card clicks and calls the function one time. The way this works is very interesting, but still very similar to what we just talked about. First, we have to give our combinator a function, something that it can call infinitely. Now, just in the same way as our Omega Combinator would expand out into itself, we use the same principle, but we thread our function into both sides. This way, as each branch tries to expand out into itself, first, it must be passed through our function f. Each of these values will expand back out to exactly this same expression over and over again, such that now f can be called an infinite number of times. This is the key. This is what allows us to create recursive functions, functions which refer to themselves. But we don't need to add any complexity to the system to do it. It can be simply done naturally with a little bit of creativity and a little bit of elegance. This is all we really need to create all of the computation that could ever be done.